Well, good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening, wherever, wherever you are in the world right now. Welcome to Global Radio Ideas webinar number seven. My name is Ken Benson from the P1 Media Group. Our company provides research, insights, and consulting to grow radio stations around the world. I had a substitution, last minute substitution with our co-host today. Um, Andy was not feeling well, so we got the president of Benstown with us today, Dave Chachi Dennis. Thanks. And welcome. Thanks for joining us here. And also, Benstown is the worldwide leader in radio imaging and audio production with headquarters in Germany. And today, Chachi joins us from Los Angeles. Thanks for letting me join. It's kind of like uh, you're going to the baseball field to see your uh, star pitcher, Clayton Kershaw, pitch, and uh, all of a sudden Clayton can't make the mound, so Chachi, the fill-in pitcher, is here. But I'm actually really excited to be part of this one because Tracy is so dear to my heart and has been such an instrumental part of our business in my career, so I'm really happy to be joining you. Uh, Global Radio Ideas, uh, the title of today's presentation is The Radio Personality Success Path, Five Stages of Growth. Uh, the chat box is activated. I think most of you guys know that, but uh, at any time, uh, if you've not seen the chat box, jump in there, ask any questions, because we will be answering them later on. And uh, our, our, our uh, renowned guest, uh, Tracy Johnson, will, will be answering them. So don't be shy and ask away. So let's tell you about Tracy. He excels in programming, promotion, and talent consulting that attract fans, grow ratings, and generates revenue. Sounds like a manager's dream. He's programmed great radio stations, leading two stations in San Diego from worst to first. He's won dozens of industry awards and was named Best Programmer in America by Radio Inc. He's coached more talent and morning shows to success than just about anyone. And if you have anything to do with morning or breakfast radio, you must read the three books he's written called Morning Radio, a couple different volumes of those. And I first had the opportunity to meet our guest way back when, when he was consulting Sweet 98 in Omaha, Nebraska, for the Alan Burns Company. Uh, Tracy was responsible for hiring me as program director. He'll probably tell you the best movies made in his career. And, and we quickly <laughs> took the station to number one. We've been friends ever since, so it's a great honor for me to introduce my friend and my mentor, Tracy Johnson. <laughs> yeah, that's we, really we, we, we looked like consultants way back then. Yeah, that's, right? Look at that. It's, I think that's the last time I wore a tie. <laughs> and those 90s ties, you know, they were they were something. Yeah. Uh, so, look, it's uh, thank you for having me on today. It's a, it's an honor to be here with both of you. And, you know, I uh, one of the things Alan taught me back when I was working with Ken in Omaha is that you're only as good as the people you surround yourself with. And that's what happened. That's why we look for the best program directors at our stations. That's why Ken... Oh, man, that is so sweet of you. And not only did Tracy hire Ken, but he hired me really well. He, you're so responsible for two things. One, for hiring me and getting me into radio in the first place at Star in San Diego. And I look back at those years, uh, Candidly is the, the best of my life. And I had such a blast and so much fun. And I learned so much from you and the entire team there. But I also owe so much of Benstown's success to you as well. Andy, who should be on and unfortunately can't be here, was introduced to me through Tracy. Tracy had been uh, overseas doing some consulting and met Andy and my other partner, Ollie, at a convention. And Andy and Ollie wanted to come and visit the, state, the States. And so they had reached out to Tracy and we owe that all to Tracy. So Tracy has been a, a huge inspiration in my career two times over. Well, Tracy, let's get into it. You've developed a five-step path to success for radio personalities. And we're so glad you're willing to share it with everybody today. So uh, how did it come about and what are these five steps? Well, it started because I, I worked with so many uh, stations, uh, managers, uh, program directors, and, and radio shows who uh, want one thing. They want overnight success. They, they usually bring in someone the number one breakfast show. And they think they can wave a magic wand and put the right talent in the right place. And then, you know, three months later, when the ratings haven't responded the way they had hoped, they wonder what went wrong. It's a lot like finding a life partner because the relationship between an audience uh, of fans fall in love with someone. You have to like them. And before you like them, you have to spend enough time with them to get to know them. A lot of times I, I'll, I'll work with personalities and say, I'll ask them, you know, what stage do you and, and, and loving what you do. I've heard of the Los Angeles Dodgers, but I'm not a fan of the Los Angeles Dodgers. So there's a, there's, I, I'm not a season ticket holder yet. So the, the, the problem is a lot of times personalities don't know what stage they're in. 
Um, managers don't know what stage that they're in, and they come on too strong, and they push listeners away by being out of sync with where they really are in that product life cycle. So the stage one is introduction. Uh, so think of it as if you're, uh, if you're a guy or a girl and you're looking for a life partner, you want to meet someone and ultimately raise a family, live happily ever after, or whatever your life goals are, you need to first meet that person. And it's the same with a relationship with radio listeners. Uh, personalities first have to be introduced to them so they can get to know them and understand them. And the be best way to do that is to establish common interests. Your goal in stage one of introduction is don't screw anything up. Don't make them hate you. Uh, you know, don't ruin your chance. Uh, and, you know, in the relationships, you know, uh, all of guys like us, you know, uh, Chachi and Ken and I probably at some point when we met our spouses, we thought, how can I trick them into thinking I like the same things they do? <laughs> um, and it's the same thing with personalities. When you're in stage one of introduction, you should integrate into the fabric of the radio station and align your name in the same way with the reasons that people are coming to your radio station first. And that's, you know, whether it's the music or the contest or the format or whatever it is, this is the wrong time to come on too strong and be self-absorbed. Nobody wants to spend time with someone they don't know if all they do is talk about themselves. Uh, think about if you went out on a date for the first time, that, that would push you away immediately, right? Makes sense. So, I mean, they don't hear, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the goal in introduction is to show more interest in the other person, show interest in their interests, and let them get to know you. So in radio, it's being the champion of the format. Uh, finding ways to introduce yourself over and over. Say your name a lot. Uh, introduce character traits. Um, it's uh, creating content-based features with your personality right in the middle of that, whether it's music uh, features or games or story-based features. And then promote yourself through imaging and production in the same way. Things that feature the talent as a spokesperson for the radio brand, for the radio station. So you're associating your name with the things that listeners already like and promote the things that you do at this point and be that enthusiastic spokesperson is the key. That makes sense. And back to your Dodgers analogy, it's like a star player is still part of the Dodgers. You're part of the organization. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, a star, a star player is probably in that like or love stage, but they're still part of the team, right? Yeah. Uh, stage two then is familiarity. And this is where, uh, in this phase, they've agreed to go out with you at least once. They're checking it out and they're interested enough to spend some time with you, but they haven't made a commitment yet. Uh, on the radio version of this, they're starting to recognize your name, some of the things uh, about you. They'll say things like, you know, I really love the station and I like that DJ that's on it. And sometimes they'll mention you by name. But they, if you were, were probed a little bit further, Ken does research for, for it, and they'd say, oh, so tell me a little bit more about this personality. Uh, they probably wouldn't be able to tell you too much about you, um, it's, but they know you. Uh, they're, they're becoming familiar with you. So at this point, you want to stay focused on the listener's interest first and be the ultimate party host. A good party host makes sure that all of their guests are having a great time, mm -hmm. but when the guests leave, they say, wow, that was an awesome party. Isn't that party host cool? I can't wait till that party host throws the next party. I want to come back to their party every time. So in familiarity, you're starting to interject some personal anecdotes into content, but stories should start with the listener and the listener's interest first. You're talking about those features at the party, but you're injecting more of your personal anecdotes into those topics. They just don't start with you yet. And this is also where I like to introduce new reasons to listen that feature key character traits of the personality. I call it kind of developing your one thing feature, the thing that you become known for, like James Corden's uh, known for carpool karaoke. So this is where you want to introduce that one thing because listeners first come to a show because of what you do. They fall in love because of who you are, but you need to get that what you do in there first. And this is the phase where you want to introduce that. Uh, imaging at this point should be around what we want them to know you for. 
Uh, I, I heard a great promo on Sirius XM on their, their hits channel the other day. They've got a new morning show that's on there now. And it's three people, a girl and two guys. And they introduced them as a gossip loving foodie, the laid back conspiracy theorist, and a way too busy family guy, very much at that, 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 that familiarity stage. You're trying to make these personalities familiar with who they are, but in the context of the things that they're doing. Now, this is the time where you're trying to get the audiences interested in what you do. Um, you, you're, you're not trying to move too fast to, to get into stage three yet. You wanna make sure that you become very familiar here. And this is where you really wanna start doing some research. Uh, you want to research how well the one thing feature is starting to establish. You want to research uh, what the audience thinks of the personality uh, based on what you know of them, what character traits are coming, cutting through. Uh, are the character traits and, and all those other assets to continue to associate with brand values, but increase that familiarity and that recognition of, of what you stand for and, 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 what, and what you're all about. So it's really critical before you get into stage three that you know how well you're doing in stage one and two. So, so Tracy, what would be the, the metrics you would use to evaluate when the show is ready? I mean, you talked about some of the techniques and, and insight you may want to get from the audience, but what, what is it? Is it you're 50% familiar with your cue. What are, what are the numbers you're thinking about before you move to stage three? A much clearer picture of how we're doing rather than just one snapshot. So you have that, so you have that perspective. So I would, I would absolutely do a research project early and it doesn't have to be an expensive one. Ken can set you up with an online project that far less expensive. It's not going to cost you 30 or $40,000 to go out and do a, a project for this. And then you can do uh, short projects. Uh, in between. And what's, what's really important is you want to start testing these features that you're doing, whether they're, they're branded features for the format or they're branded features to establish uh, character and personality traits. You want to see here is how fast can we get through them? Because stage three is where you want to be. I've seen some personalities get through stage one and two within a few months. And I've had some personalities who have been on the air for 20 years in the same market on the same show that are still in stages one and two. So, so and Tracy, let me, let me stop you there. What would be the distinction between those two different scenarios? Um, personalities who have never made an impact, that haven't moved the needle. And they might be really great DJs. They nice. might be very, they won. Oh, yeah, that's it. That's the station he's on. That's in stages one and two. You're in familiarity. And you can be on the air for years and years and years and years and never get there. So the goal, again, and that's why you need that one thing feature to cut through. Uh, we do um, a lot of focus groups with, uh, with my client stations. And one of the first things I'll ask them is, so tell me what you think about, <laughs> but they're spending a lot more time with you and they, they, they haven't told you no, they haven't shut you down yet. <laughs> Uh, so in this stage, you've, you've identified the things that they like. You, you know that you know, you've, you've found your one thing feature, you're doing your research, they're feeding it back to you, you're seeing the things that are working, and that slowly. And you start promoting that one thing feature aggressively and making it a part of your marketing and promotion. The show a little bit. So it's going to be uh, uh, focused on the one thing feature that is the most famous part of the show, but now you've got the personalities that are talking about the things that they do on the show and demonstrating their personality traits instead of being the spokespeople for the music on the station. Because, because you're, you're accelerating through this growth and you want to get through growth to get to like, which is stage four. Uh, you're gonna, and you're also going to start researching different traits. You're going to start researching character traits more. You're going to start researching the, the ultimate strength of each feature. And you're going to increase the frequency of that feature. That's why you know some shows are, are, are playing their their main feature uh, every hour during the show, because we know it's a hit. And what do you do? You play the hits. Nice. Um, uh, so you know at at this point, the, the listeners will will feedback uh, how much they like the things that you do, and they'll start recognizing certain things about the about the personality and the and the the characters as a key reason to listen. Set director, at any time, do you go back and revisit some of the earlier steps as new audience may be coming to the radio station? That's a, that's a great question. And yes, and, and you know, that, that's the real tricky part of this because the relationship that a personality has with the audience is unique to every individual listener. 
you might be in stage five. So it's important to continue to introduce yourself, to demonstrate character traits, to keep promoting those things that you do for those people who are on one stage of the relationship and serve your big fans with the things that they're coming to in stages four and five. Yeah, and that, that's where it gets a little bit tricky. Makes sense. Uh, stage four is like, uh, they're on the path to making a commitment. They're spending a lot of time with you. Still not quite exclusive, but way more time with you than with anybody else. And this is where you want to start adding much more personal stories in. Uh, stories can start with you now because they're interested in you, not just in the things that you do. Um, and they like you. So now's the time to reveal more of your character, more of your heart. Uh, it's a great time to introduce a charity or a cause because now your endorsement of these things that you care about means much more to that listener who will also care about the same things you do because there's that relationship that's developed there. I think for Ken and myself, this is all uncharted territory now because as on-air talent, we never made it to this stage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but me, me too. Um, um, this is where I would aggressively start reducing the music count. Uh, imaging should be all about personality, all about character. And when you do that research project, you're going to hear more and more comments like, I like this station because of this personality. Or, I, that, oh, this station? Yeah, that's the station that so-and-so is on. I like them because of the way he or she does this. And you're going to start seeing specific reasons where they know why they like you. They know why they're attracted. And you're going to start saying, oh, yeah, I like the music on the station, but I really listen because of the person. Right. That's the, that's the like stage. Um, most personalities top out at like. There's very few that make it to stage five. So what's the secret sauce to get to five? Five is uh, where listeners have made a commitment. They've fallen in love and they've chosen the show. They're the reason to listen. It's no longer at all about what you do. It's all about who you are. It's because you're the one doing it. Um, and this is, you know, the secret that gets you to stage five is longevity, heart, passion, demonstrating that you care and that you enrich and make listeners' lives better as a result of uh, being on the air. And you can hear stations who know that their talent has made it to stage five. Uh, the Burt Show in Atlanta on, um, uh, on, uh, uh, on the top 40 station there, uh, they built the entire radio station around the Burt Show. Uh, Burt's voice is probably on that station six to eight times an hour outside the morning show. It's the Burt Show station. And that this is this is where, you know, as a program director, this is where I wanted all my talent to be. Uh, I wanted to be the state. I wanted to be the Jeff and Jer station because you know, that's something that you cannot compete with. Yeah, it, that, that's where you, that's where you're truly bulletproof. Um, it's uh, you know, you know, talent that makes it to this level are the ones who are willing to make themselves vulnerable who have the, uh, the character, the talent, the ability to, um, to really connect and relate to listeners on a, on a, on a deep basis. So this, there's, there's a handful of, of shows that really make it to love. And the, that list is even shorter of those who can stay at this stage because a lot of them get to this love stage and they get lazy. And just like <laughs> in a marriage, you marry someone and live happily ever, ever after. After a while, you get bored. So how do you innovate? How do you keep, keep surprising them? Uh, you, I mean, you stop bringing them flowers after a while, right? They start getting taken for granted. And if uh, personalities start doing that with listeners, they start cheating on you. Uh, they, they, they go that's somewhere great. else. They look for something else that's more exciting. That's a great, uh, a great analogy. And to compare it to a relationship and a courtship is, is fascinating. I, can, uh, I get that completely. So that, that's the five stages. Uh, you know, the, the key, you know, what I'd recommend that every program director of every manager, every personality that's on this, that, that sees this, um, identify what stage you're in. Uh, remember, the length of uh, time that you're on the air is really irrelevant. Um, you know, try to get to stage three as quickly as you can, but don't rush it. And also understand that you can accelerate the process and get there faster 
but you've still got to pass through each of these stages. You can't skip a stage. If you try to go from introduction to like, you're going to come on too strong and you're going to run listeners off. You're going to be abrasive. And we've all seen personalities who do that. We, I mean, we've seen, Ken's seen countless uh, research projects that come back and say, man, they're so arrogant. All they do is talk and they talk about themselves all the time. They're driving me crazy. And who wants to hear what they think? Just shut right. up and play another song. That's because you're out of, it doesn't mean you're a bad personality. It means you're out of sync with where you are in the relationship. You're coming on too strong when you're pushing listeners away. So it's really important to know who you are, who you're for, and where you're at in this uh, product life cycle. Hey, Seth Director, one more question for you. I'm sure you read every day the trades, and it seems quite often now we'll see someone leave a show, someone be reintroduced to a show or introduced to uh, you know, a new show. Are people, can two people on one show be at different stages? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think every personality has their own relationship with the audience. Uh, so within a show and the show has a relationship with the audience. So it gets complicated. Uh, and, and I, you know, when you're introducing a new character, a new personality, you don't want to bring them on too fast. I'm doing this in a show in a, a top 10 market right now where we've got a, a, a two person show that's uh, become very well established. We're definitely missing a third person. We need to introduce that third voice. And we've identified the person that's coming in and they're going to be very dynamic, uh, coming from another market that uh, they are a primary personality that's probably in stage four in the market that they're in now, a much smaller market. And there's, I, I'm explaining, you know, you're in stage one in this new station. <laughs> and just because someone in uh, market 75 loves you, market top 10 who has never heard you before you're brand new and you, you've got to go back and, and be introduced again. So you know, so we're going to bring them on very slowly and integrate them into a show the listeners already like, otherwise we're going to bring somebody and say, yeah, they're ruining a great show. This person's ruining a great show. So yeah, there's a different relationship for every personality. Well, Tracy, these five stages of growth have absolutely been fascinating, and I'm sure we can talk all day about this, but we're a bit limited in time on the webinar here. And we did want to touch on, on a couple things and also take some questions from the people viewing. So if you have a question, feel free to pop it up in the chat box. Uh, Tracy will stay on and, and take questions as long as you can. Um, so look at it as free consulting advice today. Uh, just want to cover one more issue, though, while, while maybe some questions come in is, you know, the Christmas season is pretty much upon us. And is there anything new or, or what are the must-do Christmas promotions or, or things we should do either on a morning show or on the radio station? Well, there again, I, I think this year is quite a bit different than uh, a lot of past years. Um, depending on where you are in the, in the uh, life cycle and what stage that you might be in, um, if let's say you're a show that you think is in stage three and maybe you're in stage four, like uh, you're somewhere between growth and like Christmas is a great time to do something with heart that starts to introduce that charitable angle to show that, that you care about the community and you're making the community a better place to live. So if you do something like um, a, a Christmas wish promotion, uh, we, I've got a show here in San Diego, Jagger and Christie, which was uh, Chachi. It was uh, Chachi's first job in radio as pr producer That's for right. uh, Jagger and Christie uh, back in the day. Uh, there, and I believe it's their 10th year of doing Christmas Wish now on Magic 92.5. And they're at a point, uh, they're in the love stage of their relationship with the market. And they can come on and say, we're doing Christmas Wish. Here's the day it starts. And that's all the promotion they need. They, their listeners love them for it. Uh, it, it's, it, it's absolutely fascinating. Um, if you are in an earlier stage of development, there's a, a great promotion of breaking and entering Christmas, uh, which we did, uh, for many years with Jeff and Jaren, a lot of stations are doing it now. Love that. Uh, free beer and Hopkins do it in several markets. They call it the Christmas break in where you break in and make Christmas happen. So it's got a little bit more of an edge to it. And it's not quite as sappy as making people cry on the radio, but you're, you're picking out a family and you're still having a heart and you're connecting to that season. Um, if you're not able to do that this year, and I like a lot of stations are limited by budget, limited by time, limited by resources because of COVID and all the things that we're going through this year. Uh, there's some other things that you can do on the air that are reflecting the season. And there, there's, there's dozens of those. Um, but I think the key is to figure out ways that you can 
uh, inject your personality and your personalities into them. So it's not just the station doing this, but it's these personalities on the station. It's a great way to associate a personality brand with the station brand, with something that the audience is thinking about and caring about right now. A little bit of housekeeping. If you've got any questions, please type your comment now in the chat box. Also, yes, we will be sending out a video replay of this as well as Tracy's deck. So that'll be coming to you shortly after the end of the call. Yeah, and apparently some people have had some technical issues today staying on, and we apologize for that. We haven't had that uh, report in, in any of the prior webinars we've done so far. Um, also, uh, since it is late in the year and December at a radio station is madness. Um, we've opted to do the next webinar in January. And we've got some great people lined up in 2021. If you have a suggestion for someone you'd like to see, feel free to email us, uh, ken at p1mediagroup.com. You can see Tracy's uh, contact information if you want to get a hold of him or learn more or visit his website, which is filled with uh, lots of great information. Oh, also, go ahead, Chachi. Oh, I was just going to check for any questions. But okay, I... And also, the slide up now is all the webinars we've done, the last seven. Um, you can view them anytime. They're available in a number of different places, including p1mediagroup.com. Fantastic. Well, everybody, thank you so much for joining us today. We. we Love having you here. We look forward to having you back again next year. Tracy, it's always such a pleasure, and it was extremely insightful today about your five steps of growth. And uh, thank you so much for, for being a part of the webinar. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Enjoyed it. Thank you so much, Tracy. All right, Chachi. Thanks for uh, pitching in. On behalf of Tracy Johnson Media Group, P1 Media Group, and Benstown, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next year.